All right, welcome back students. I uh, wanted to answer a question I got from one of my new subscribers. Uh, thank you for subscribing. She wanted to know whether Florida uh, is a mother preference state when it comes to child custody. The short answer is no. Florida uh, gives no pre preference to either the father or the mother, and that's specifically uh, recognized by statute under 61.13, which I'll show in a second. But the way we got there is really uh, kind of interesting historically. And so I wanted to go through it and that's why I thought it was a great question. So let's go back in time to uh, 18th century England. There was uh, a famous jurist named Sir William Blackstone and he's famous uh, primarily for writing a four volume treatise called The Commentaries on the Laws of England. This treatise set out to systematically organize all the statutes and common law that were in effect in England and to sort of trace their origin and show that everything uh, was coherent, everything was logical, everything was was uh, was perfect and, and fit into a very organized scheme and made sense. Anyway, the treatise became uh, so popular and important that it was uh, made the cornerstone of a legal education at the university. So if you went to law school in England or in uh, the United States in America, you would have to study Sir William Blackstone's treatise when you first got there because that would give you the foundational knowledge you need. So let's take a look at it quickly. You can find it for free on the uh, Yale's The Avalon Project. He talked about uh, children being property of the father, the empire of the father. So quite clearly the common law would say that the presumption in a divorce would be that the children would go to the father because they uh, were the property of the father uh, and they would go to his empire and then when they reached the age of 21 it would give place to the empire of reason this was the age of reason so but that began to change with the tender years doctrine and that can be traced back uh, to a woman named Carolyn Norton who was um, uh, divorced from her husband and due to the way the common law worked that her their three sons uh, remained in custody uh, with with her ex-husband and so she was a woman of society she had a lot of friends in high places and she petitioned and 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 exhorted them that this was unfair and they passed uh, the custody of infants act in 1839 and this gave the judge more discretion on uh, awarding custody of young children to the mother and so that begins what's known as the tender years doctrine and that's the doctrine that was in effect uh, until relatively recently in Florida here's a Florida case Johnson v Adair it's from the uh, second district court of appeals 2004 and it's a good case for laying out uh, the history of the tender years doctrine and how it had changed over time because the district court started reading the legislative intent as saying don't rely on the tender years doctrine anymore you need to give equal consideration to uh, both the father and the mother well the current statute doesn't use the term uh, equal consideration it just straight out says uh, this is florida statute 61.13 you can find it uh, under subsection uh, under section two there is no presumption for or against the father or mother of the child or for or against any specific time sharing schedule uh, so that's it boom the uh, Florida legislature specifically uh, overturned common law which was presumption for the father and uh, the tender years doctrine which was a presumption towards the mother and says that no presumption will be given and so the overriding question for the court is what is in the best interests of the child so thank you for the question great question please keep them coming and if you uh, uh, have any put them in the put them in the comments below and I'll see you again next time